In this video, we are going to generate code for our Smithy4S spec and run an HTTP server with HTTP4S. First, we need some sort of project for Scala. I'm going to use SBT for these videos, but you can also use Mill or you can manually generate code using the generated tool. Uh, but I would recommend SBT if you haven't used uh, Smithy4S before. This is my project. I only have a Scala version here. I'm going to quickly import that into Metals. Let's add the plugin because first and foremost, Smithy4S is a code generation tool. It allows you to generate code from Smithy specs to Scala uh, in a protocol agnostic way. So any protocol that you're going to use, you can generate the code for that using Smithy4S. And then you can pull in a protocol specific interpreter and get some sort of implementation of that service or a client for that service or uh, expose that service to the world as an HTTP server or anything else really. It doesn't really matter which technology you're going to use. Smithy4S is flexible enough to allow you to write your own interpreters and deal with that in any way you like. But today we are going to do HTTP. We're going to just use this simple REST-JSON protocol, which we defined a spec for in the previous video. So first we need to add that, uh, that build plugin uh, I'm going to put it in project slash plugins SVT. And the plugin is, uh, is this. This is the latest version as of now, uh, 0.17.5. It might be something else when you are doing it. Uh, and after that, I'm actually going to run another import to, to Metals. And now I should be able to enable the plugin on my project. You actually have to enable this on every SVT module that you want to uh, generate code in. There's a good reason for that, but uh, we only have one module anyway, so it doesn't matter. Uh, so it's called Smithy4S Code and Plugin. There's one more thing that we need to do uh, before we are able to generate code, which is to actually get the sources for the code generation in the right place. Uh, I have this weather.smithy file and it's on the root of my workspace. That is not where Smithy4S is going to look for these files. Uh, so normally we would create our files, our Scala files in um, source main Scala and let's say main.scala. Uh, let's do that. I'm actually going to put this in a package. So let's call it Swift first demo. Uh, and let me put this here. Now this is where we put the Scala sources in source main Scala. But for the Smithy sources, we will put them in source main Smithy. So let me create that folder. And I'm going to just move my weather.smithy file into that directory. And now I will import my build again. And this will actually trigger the code generation process. And I can already see that it succeeded because I'm getting errors from the target directory. If you try to compile the project and run it, maybe using bloop or maybe using SBT, you will notice that when you try to run or compile, there's a bunch of errors because just adding the plugin is not enough. You actually have to add a dependency as well for the core module of Smithy4S. It doesn't have any dependencies. There are no libraries uh, that it depends on whatsoever, uh, not even cats or anything like that, but we do need to add it manually. This might not be true in the future. There has been some talk of, um, of adding this dependency for you, but so far this is, uh, this is something you have to do. So I'm going to say in my settings, um, I'm going to add a library dependency. And this is going to be, oops, uh, Smithy4S. And I'm actually going to just get Smithy4S core for now. And this is my Smithy4S version. So let's do, uh, let's do reload. This will give us our latest configuration in SBT and try to run. Now, again, this is some like some logs from the Smithy4S code generation. Uh, I don't have a main class, so let me change that. Um, now we do have a main class and yeah, now it runs, but we have to add the dependency. I still get errors from, uh, from metals because I didn't import these changes. So let me do that in the meantime. Okay, so let's see what's in that generated code. Uh, you can go there manually from target Scala 213. This is what I got because I am on 213. Uh, and then uh, source managed, and you can just go to Scala. We basically got a new file for every shape in our Smithy spec. So let's take a look. We have city ID. We have the create city input. Uh, we have the create city output. We have get weather input, get weather output and weather service. 
You don't get one for operations. That's worth noting. Uh, you get one for a service and there's also a package object with some type aliases. So let's try to expose this to, to the world uh, using HTTP4S. So the first thing I need to do is get HTTP4S and some sort of server on the class path. Just get something that can actually be, be a server. Uh, and I'm going to use Ember for that. Uh, so I'm going to use the Scaladex search plugin. And this is going to be just HTTP4S. And we are looking for HTTP4S uh, server, Ember server. And I'm going to pick the latest version of 0.23. And let's import again. So now I should be able to use IO app. And I'm going to use IO app simple and just do the magic incantation of creating an Ember server. So Ember server builder, default, build, use forever. So this actually will create a server on my 8080 port, but there's no route that is going to bind to that. So um, that's actually fine. We don't need the route. Uh, I'm going to just do one more thing. I'm going to print uh, the server binding um, the address of the server when it starts. And I also will enable forking in my build so that I can safely cancel the application without fear that the port will remain taken. So now we can cancel and start again and just keep restarting. Great, so we have a server and we have the generated code Then we need to sort of do something with these, these things. First, what does Smithy First actually give you? We want to write the business logic of our application, like the, the implementation of this sort of service interface and these operations with no worries that we write something on HTTP level that will get out of sync. And this is exactly what we're getting. Uh, we will not actually have the ability to control any of this because Smithy for us will take care of it for us. So one of the things that we got generated was this weather service. Now I'm going to slowly get there. First we have this type alias in the package object, uh, weather service. That looks interesting. Let's try to implement that. I'm going to call it impl and it's going to be a weather service from the hello package, uh, a weather service of IO. And if you have been doing like tagless final or like polymorphic effects ever, uh, then you probably recognize that uh, this is something like an algebra or like a polymorphic interface uh, with a polymorphic effect. And you usually create instances of this either by creating a subclass, which is absolutely fine, or you can do an anonymous implementation. And I'm going to just do just that, uh, use an anonymous class. Uh, so let's do it. And we have to implement two members, uh, two methods. And they look exactly like the specs that we wrote. So we have get weather with a city ID parameter and uh, a get weather output. This is actually like this whole type. So if we go inside, uh, there's a generated case class which has a weather parameter and a degrees, optional degrees parameter. It's generated as an option of int because it's an optional parameter and has a default value of none. You can customize this behavior. It can be uh, with no default. So let's get back to our code, uh, our main class. And let's try to implement these, uh, these methods somehow. So I need to return and get weather output with these two fields. Uh, I'm just going to come up with any kind of bizarre response. Uh, first, I'm going to print the input, get weather city ID, and then do basically this. So good weather and like uh, some 40 degrees. This is actually very hot in Celsius, but let's just use that. And create city will we'll also do something similar. We're going to just print create city with the parameters, country like that, and then um, get the output with an arbitrary ID. Uh, and this is great. Now we have this implementation. It still has no HTTP specific details and it's not going to. We can take a quick look at what this type alias actually is. It points to something called functor algebra, but most importantly, it points to weather service gen. 
Now this may look a little nasty because there's like a type parameter with five parameters. Um, you don't have to like be too worried about this. The library is taking care of most of this complexity for you, but uh, we, we will take a look at this uh, later on uh, in another video. Uh, at this point, we still need to connect this implementation with our server. So we need something that will allow us to go from a weather service to something like an HTTP route so that we will be able to pass it to with HTTP uh, with app, with HTTP app uh, and just get our service going. Uh, so this is the actual interpreter. We will need one, uh, we will need to get a dependency for this because we need some library that has both Smith4S core and HTTP4S, like some types from HTTP4S in it. And that library is Smith4S HTTPS. So HTTP4S. Um, and I'm going to import that. And at this point, we should be able to use this. So what we are getting from Smith4S HTTP4S is support for the symbol REST JSON protocol. Uh, by the way, I didn't have to tell my Smith4S code gen about Alloy because it's built in, like it's a very special case. It's not actually looking at this file, like the code gen is not looking at Smithy build. Uh, it works because the plugin just adds alloy by default. But in our code, we will still need to do something about uh, the protocol. And because the protocol is called simple JSON, we can start from there. And yeah, there's like a simple rest JSON type from alloy and simple rest JSON builder. This is what we want to use. So I can just give it my implementation. Um, actually, sorry, it's dot routes with my implementation. And at this point, I need to call make to get an either, which will hopefully give me an HTTP routes, or I can use a resource. I'm going to use this because I already have some resource uh, right here. So it should be easier to compose. Uh, again, the type of this, is a resource of HTTP routes. If I have an HTTP routes, I can easily convert that to HTTP app and bind this to my server. So first we need to flat map on this. Uh, We're going to take this resource and flat map with the routes up to this point. And I should be able to say with HTTP app routes or not found. And at this point, I would just like to flex the feature of metals, which is in lining of uh, values, but it doesn't work at the moment. So I have to copy paste it myself. So this is the complete main class and it should be good enough to give us this functionality of the application. So let me run this again. And in another window, I'm going to use an HTTP client called HTTPPy, sorry, HTTPy. Um, that's actually a very long prompt, so I'm going to do this from home. Uh, and yeah, let's start simple. Let's start by calling this get endpoint. Uh, so HP get uh, localhost 8080, that's matching this. Uh, the cities, uh, the ID can be anything, uh, like any string, but let's just use a number. Uh, numbers of valid, valid strings in this context, whether and it works, we got the degrees, it's, it's there. We can try to use any other city ID. And you can also see that the input is being printed in my operation, uh, in my operations implementation right here. And get whether it's, it's working. If I try a different method like post, it doesn't work because there is no such binding. There's no, no HTTP binding for post to this endpoint. We can also try to use the, the post operation, the create city. Uh, post localhost 8080 uh, cities uh, just like that and I'm getting a kind of weird bizarre error it's actually a hex dump but what, what, what we're getting is it expected an object it got nothing uh, on the root on like the dot path what this means is we just didn't send a body uh, which is true we didn't and we need two parameters of the body uh, by default, if you don't add any kind of bindings like HTTP label, your whole input or output will go to the payload, so the HTTP body. Uh, that is true for, I think, all HTTP-based protocols in Smithy for us, sorry, in Smithy, uh, but I guess you can also opt out of these, uh, these um, semantics and do it however you like. 
Uh, regardless, we have this post endpoint, I would like to call it. So yeah, the city is going to be something like London and country is going to be the UK. Uh, I'm going to do this verbosely so that you can see the actual request body. Now this is my request. We have a post uh, with this body. And now this is the response. We got a 200 OK and a city ID uh, in the response. By the way, uh, I didn't show this before, but you can customize the default status code here. Um, the default is just 200, but you can customize it in the HP um, binding and the HP trait. And you can just choose any valid HP code. However, if I were to do this now, I would need to regenerate my code by doing run. It, it knows that it has to regenerate automatically. And if I call this endpoint again, I'll get a 201 which probably makes more sense for this endpoint anyway. So I'm going to keep it. So this is it for servers. This is how you create a smooth for a server and you generate the code and you bind it to the whole thing. Uh, in most likelihood, this is going to be good enough to carry you like, the rest of your journey for uh, just generating code and finding some issues. You can probably Google them or go to smooth for us and see uh, some documentation. Uh, I encourage you to try this at this point. It's very, very nice. Uh, I really like this style of, style of um, generating code and then interpreting that uh, because it gives you a lot of power if you are actually interested in building tools based on this. But also as a user, it gives you so much freedom from details like HTTP bindings. You will notice that I had to change no code after changing the default status code of my operation, which is really great because it's static information. It never changes. Um, depending on my inputs or outputs, it's just something that's in the spec. So because it's in the spec, I shouldn't have to change my 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 code to adjust to that. Uh, of course, if you change the spec in a way that's not compatible, like if you removed one of these parameters, if you try to run that code, uh, it will be generated, it will no longer compile because this method has just one parameter now. So we need to apply these changes as well. But it's very fast. We We did this like we commented the line, two lines, and run our code or tried to run our code and almost immediately we get uh, errors. And now uh, if I send this, I'm still sending the country, by the way, it's just going to be ignored. It's still there in the payload, uh, but the, the service doesn't actually get this field. It's no longer there. So I hope this was useful and I'll see you in the next videos.